Hey guys, good morning. Happy July. All right, we are into July 1st. Looks like we're gonna do some reading in Chronicles with lots of fun names. <laughs> Yay, just what I need after a long shift. All right, man, what am I on for speed? It's slow. I gotta speed her up. Hezekiah reopens the temple, 2 Chronicles 29, 3, 1 through 17, which was 716 BC. In the very first month of the first year of his reign, Hezekiah reopened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. He summoned the priests and Levites to meet him at the courtyard east of the temple. He said to them, listen to me, you Levites, purify yourselves and purify the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove all defiled things from the sanctuary. Our ancestors were unfaithful and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, our God. They abandoned the Lord and his dwelling place. They turned their backs on him. They also shut the doors of the temple's entry room and snuffed out the lamps. They stopped burning incense and presenting burnt offerings at the sanctuary of the God of Israel. That is why the Lord's anger has fallen upon Judah and Jerusalem. He has made them an object of dread, horror, and ridicule, as you can see with your own eyes. Because of this, our fathers have been killed in battle, and our sons and daughters and wives have been captured. But now I will make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, so that his fierce anger will turn away from us. My sons, do not de neglect your duties any longer. The Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister to him, and to lead the people in worship and present offerings to him. Then these Levites got right to work. From the clan of Kohath, Mahath, son of Amasai, and Joel, son of Azariah. From the clan of Merari, Kish, son of Abdi, and Azariah, son of Jehalel. From the clan of Gershon, Joah, son of Zimmah, and Eden, son of Joah. From the family of Elizaphan, Shimri and Jael. From the family of Asaph, Zechariah and Madaniah. From the family of Heman, Jehiel and Shammai. From the family of Jedithan, Shemaiah and Uziel. These men called together their fellow Levites. And they all purified themselves. Then they began to cleanse the temple of the Lord, just as the king had commanded. They were careful to follow all the Lord's instructions for their work. The priests went into the sanctuary of the temple of the Lord to cleanse it, and they looked out to the temple courtyard and defiled the things they found. From there, the Levites carted it out all carted it all out to the Kidron Valley. They began to work in the early spring on the first day of the new year, and in eight days they had reached the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then they purified the temple of the Lord itself, which took another eight days. So the entire task was completed in 16 days. The temple rededication, 2 Chronicles 29, 18 through 36, which was 716 BC. Then the Levites went to King Hezekiah and gave him this report. We have cleansed the entire temple of the Lord, the altar of burnt offerings with all its utensils, and the table of the bread of presence with all of its utensils. We have also recovered all the items discarded by King Ahaz when he was unfaithful and closed the temple. They are now in front of the altar of the Lord, purified and ready for use. Early the next morning, King Hezekiah gathered in the city gathered the city officials and went to the temple of the Lord. They brought seven bulls, seven rams, and seven male lambs as burnt offerings, together with seven male goats as sin offerings for the kingdom, for the temple, and for Judah. The king commanded the priests who were descendants of Aaron to sacrifice animals on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bulls, and the priests took their blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Next they killed the rams and sprinkled their blood on the altar. And finally, they did the same with the male lambs. The male goats for the sin offering were brought before the king and the assembly of the people who laid their hands on them. The priests then killed the goats as a sin offering and sprinkled their blood on the altar to make atonement for the sins of Israel. The king had specifically commanded that this burnt offering and sin offering should be made for all of Israel. King Hezekiah then stationed the Levites at the temple of the Lord with cymbals, lyres, and harps. He obeyed all the commands that the Lord had given to King David through Gad, the king's seer, the and the prophet Nathan. 
The Levites then took their positions around the temple with the instruments of David, and the priests took their positions with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah ordered that the burnt offerings be placed on the altar. As the burnt offering was presented, songs of praise to the Lord were begun, accompanied by trumpets and other instruments of David, the former king of Israel. The entire assembly worshiped the Lord as the singer sang the trumpets blew as the singer sang and the trumpets blew until all the burnt offerings were finished. Then the king and everyone with him bowed down in worship. King Hezekiah and the officials ordered the Levites to praise the Lord with psalms written by David and by Asaph the seer. So they offered joyous praise and bowed down in worship. Then Hezekiah declared, now that you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord, bring your sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings to the temple of the Lord. So the people brought their sacrifices and thanksgiving offerings, and all those whose hearts were willing brought burnt offerings too. The people brought the Lord 700 bulls, 100 rams, and 200 male lambs for burnt offerings. They also brought 600 cattle and 3,000 sheep and goats as sacred offerings. But there were too few priests to prepare all the burnt offerings. So their relatives, the Levites, helped them work until the work was finished, and the priests had been purified. For the Levites had been more conscientious about purifying themselves than the priests had been. There was an abundance of burnt offerings, along with the usual liquid offerings, and a great deal of fat from the many peace offerings. So the temple of the Lord was restored to service, and Hezekiah and all of the people rejoiced because of what God had done for the people, and everything that had been accomplished so quickly. Preparations for the Passover, 2 Chronicles 30, 1 through 9, which was 716 BC. King Hezekiah now sent word to all of Israel and Judah, and he wrote letters of invitation to the people of Ephraim and Manasseh. He asked everyone to come to the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover of the Lord, the God of Israel. The king, his officials, and all the community of Jerusalem decided to celebrate Passover a month later than usual. They were unable to celebrate it at the prescribed time because not enough priests could be purified by then, and the people had not yet assembled at Jerusalem. This plan for keeping the Passover seemed right to the king and to all the people, so they sent a proclamation throughout all of Israel, from Beersheba in the south to Dan in the north, inviting everyone to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover of the Lord, the God of Israel. The people had not been celebrating it in great numbers as required by the law. At the king's command, runners were sent throughout Israel and Judah. They carried letters that said, O people of Israel, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, so that he will return to the few of us who have survived the conquest of the Assyrian kings. Do not be like your ancestors and relatives who abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and became an object of derision, as you yourselves can see. Do not be stubborn, as they were, but submit yourselves to the Lord. Come to his temple which we, he has set apart as holy forever. Worship the Lord your God so that the fear, his fierce anger will turn away from you. For it will return, for if you return to the Lord, your relatives and your children will be treated mercifully by their captors and they will be able to return to the land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful. If you return to him, he will not continue to turn his face from you. Celebration of Passover, 2 Chronicles 30, 10 through 27, which was 716 BC. The runners went from the town to town, throughout Ephraim and Manasseh, and as far as the territory of Zebulun. But most of the people just laughed as the runners and, at the runners and made fun of them. However, some people from Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and went to Jerusalem. At the same time, God was on the people in the land of Judah, giving them all one heart to obey the orders of the king and his officials who were following the word of the Lord. So a huge crowd assembled at Jerusalem mid-spring to celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. They set to work and removed the pagan altars from Jerusalem. They took all their incense altars and threw them into the Kidron Valley. On the 14th day of the second month, one month later than usual, the people slaughtered the Passover lamb. This shamed the priests and Levites, so they purified themselves and brought burnt offerings to the temple of the Lord. Then they took their place, places at the temple, as prescribed in the law of Moses, the man of God. The Levites brought sacrificial blood to the priests, who then sprinkled it on the altar. Since many people had not purified themselves, the Levites had to slaughter their Passover lamb for them, to set them apart for the Lord. Most of the people 
Most of those who came from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulon had not purified themselves, but King Hezekiah prayed for them, and they were allowed to eat the Passover meal anyway, even though this was contrary to the requirements of the law. For Hezekiah said, May the Lord, who is good, pardon those who have decided to follow the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even though they are not properly cleansed for the ceremony. And the Lord listened to Hezekiah's prayer and healed the people. So the people of Israel who were present in Jerusalem joyously celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. Each day the Levites and priests sang to the Lord, accompanied by loud instruments. Hezekiah encouraged the Levites regarding the skill they displayed as they served the Lord. The celebration continued for seven days. Peace offerings were sacrificed, and the people gave thanks to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. The entire assembly then decided to continue the festival for another seven days, so they celebrated joyfully for another week. King Hezekiah gave the people a thousand bulls, seven thousand sheep and goats for offerings, and the officials donated a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep and goats. Meanwhile, many more priests purified themselves. The entire assembly of Judah rejoiced, including the priests and Levites who came from the land of Israel, the foreigners who came to the festival, and all who lived in Judah. There was great joy in the city, for Jerusalem had not seen a celebration like this one since the days of Solomon, King David's son. Then the priests and Levites stood and blessed the people, and God heard their prayer from his holy dwelling in heaven. Hezekiah's Religious Reforms, 2 Chronicles 31, 1 through 21, 716 BC. When the festival ended, the Israelites who attended went to all the towns of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh, and they smashed all the sacred pillars, cut down the Asherah poles, and removed the pagan shrines and altars. After this, the Israelites returned to their own towns and homes. Hezekiah then organized the priests and Levites into divisions to offer the burnt offerings and peace offerings and to worship and give thanks and praise to the Lord at the gates of the temple. The king made a personal contribution of animals for the daily morning and evening burnt offerings, the weekly Sabbath festivals and the monthly new moon festivals and the annual festivals as prescribed in the law of the Lord. In addition, he required the people of Jerusalem to bring a portion of their goods to the priests and Levites so they could devote themselves fully to the law of the Lord. When the people of Israel heard these requirements, they responded generously by bringing their first share of their grain, new wine, olive oil, honey, and the produce of their fields. They brought a large quantity, a tithe of all they produced. The people who had moved to Judah from Israel and the people of Judah themselves brought in tithes of their cattle, sheep, and goats, and a tithe of all the things that had been dedicated to the Lord their God, and they piled them up in a great heap. They began piling them up in late spring, and the heaps continued to grow until early autumn. When Hezekiah and his officials came and saw these huge piles, they thanked the Lord and his people, Israel. Where did all this come from? Hezekiah asked the priests and Levites. And Azariah the high priest from the family of Zadok replied, Since people get, began bringing their gifts to the Lord's temple, we've had enough and plenty to eat and plenty to spare. The Lord has blessed his people, and all of this is left over. Hezekiah ordered the storerooms be prepared in the temple of the Lord. When this was done, the people faithfully brought all the gifts, ties, and other items dedicated for the use in the temple. Conaniah the Levite was put in charge, assisted by his brother Shammai. The supervisors under them were Je Jehiel, Azariah, Nahath, Asahel, Jeremoth, Jozebad, Eliel, Ismachiah, Mahath, and Beniah. These appointments were made by King Hezekiah and Azariah, the chief official in the temple of God. Kor, son of Imna, the Levite, who was the gatekeeper at the east gate, was put in charge of distributing the volunteer off voluntary offerings given to God, the gifts and the things that had been dedicated to the Lord. His faithful assistants were Eden, Miniamin, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah. They distributed the gifts among the families of the priests in their towns by division, dividing the gifts fairly among the old and young alike. They distributed the gifts to all the male three-year-olds and older, regardless of their place in the genealogical records. The distribution went to all who, who would come to the Lord's temple to perform their daily duties according to their division. They distributed gift, gifts to the priests who were listed by their families in the genealogical records and to the Levites, 20 years old or older, who were listed according to their jobs and their division. 
Food allotments were also given to the families who were listed in the genealogical records, including, including their little babies, wives, sons, and daughters, for they had all been faithful in purifying themselves. As for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who were living in the open villages around the towns, men were appointed by name to distribute portions to every male among the priests and to all the Levites listed in the genealogical records. In this way, King Hezekiah handled the distribution throughout all of Judah, doing what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord his God. In all that he did in the service of the temple of God and in his efforts to follow God's laws and commands, Hezekiah sought his God wholeheartedly. As a result, he was very successful. All right. Whew. I'm tired. All right. There we go. Another day done. Day 175 tomorrow. All right, you guys. That's it for today. I have to go straight away to bed because I have to work at 2 this afternoon. From 2 to 10 tonight. So I've got to get some sleep in between now and my next shift. I just got done work. But i got to get my kid ready for camp and then i got to go straight to bed so I can sleep before my next shift. And then I will be done for four days. Not eight, four, for four days. So I was walking pretty fast today. I up the speed. I didn't feel like I was going fast enough. And then I was almost going too fast. Sweating. All right, you guys. I hope you all have a blessed day. Um, and I will see you all, hopefully, if I sleep normal, tomorrow, I will see you all for breakfast tomorrow morning. So I hope you have a blessed day. Stay on plan. It's Thursday. There's no special things happen on a Thursday. It's payday. That's it, at least here. Other than that, what happens on a Thursday that requires you to eat off plan? I can't think of anything. So stay on plan today, and I will see you all online later, I'm sure, and at the very least tomorrow morning for more chronological devotions. All right, you guys. Love you all. Bye.